What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be breaking down CBS as a brand new 2025 NFL mock draft. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Blow my face is my board. It has all of my honest opinions on here. We're going to be dropping a corners video this week within the next seven days. So super excited for that. We'll be wrapping it all up. I am going to be having well over 20 corners on it. So it'll be even more in depth than my quarterback video that was over an hour long. So you can imagine how long this one might be. But let's get into this. Of course, if you are new, would love for you guys to stick around, make content like this all the damn time. And then you could use that link tree to go anywhere you want, including our sponsor of the show, Underdog Fantasy, where you get up to a thousand bucks for free when you get to play uh, on whenever you do your first deposit. So feel free to do that. Uh, I get 60 bucks out of it, but that's full transparency. I like the company. They treat me well. They treat you guys well. It's fun. I use the app. And so feel free to use it as well. Uh, first pick, we got Travis Hunter going to the Jaguars. I make this pick myself. Uh, there's just the one dilemma as in he's not the best corner in the class. He's not the best receiver in the class. He might be the best receiver in the class, but even if he is, he's not better than Malik Neighbors. He's not better than Marvin Harrison Jr. in my opinion. So is he worth a number one pick since those guys weren't? Granted, those guys arguably should have been. So you could argue it, but um, I do think that if there's a chance that Travis Hunter slips, that's the main reason. Uh, being a two-way player doesn't have the value in the NFL the way it does in college, but uh, it's a pick that I still make myself at the time. Uh, continuing on, it kind of feels like a one-two is very easy at this point. Cam Ward goes to the New York Giants, most talented quarterback in the class. It's just um, his processor just randomly switches to what the hell am I doing mode in the middle of a game and then it just switches back to normal. So I don't really know if that inconsistency is something that's gonna be really rewarded in the NFL where uh, you need to minimize your mistakes. At number three, Mikel Williams goes to the Tennessee Titans. I don't disagree with edge for Tennessee. However, Mikel Williams has earned zero right to be able to be considered above guys like Abdul Carter and uh, James Pierce. But again, it's a different take. I at least like it over the standard quarterback route. So I'm a fan, I'm a fan of it. At number four, Shadur Sanders goes to the uh, the Cleveland Browns. I ended up taking a running back in Ashton Genty. And if you guys want to understand my logic behind it, I ended up describing it in my most recent mock draft in a, probably a one to two minute explanation as to the history of the running back position, at least recently with players of similar value. Bottom line, I think that we are just not acknowledging the fact that the NFL values running back more than these so-called analysts do. I think that also this is a team that I don't think Shudder Sanders is massively going to improve. Uh, it's a team that also can wait. I honestly think they can. So I'd prefer to go elsewhere. I don't think this would be a bad move, but I do think realistically in the NFL, they might look at alternate options. At pick number five, you got Will Johnson going to the Raiders. They're going best player available. If you don't have a quarterback you like on the board, uh, it's never a bad thing to go after the best player on the board, especially at a position that we're getting more and more really talented young corners in, but you know, there's still such a emphasis on passing in the NFL that I would not think of this as a mistake. Will Campbell goes at pick number six. I think Will Campbell is a pure guard at this point. I think he's a fringe starting tackle, which technically could be an upgrade for the Patriots. I know Vidarian Lowe, according to you guys, has been doing a much better job than expected. So maybe there's some hope there, but I don't think that the line is fully solved. I think Will Campbell would be an upgrade, but I'd prefer at this point to go after Abdul Carter, go after the guy who is a better talent at a position of more value. At number seven, we got T-Mac going to the Saints. I think Tetro McMillan on the Saints makes a ton of sense. They've been facing, you know, pretty much a Tetro McMillan and Mike Evans for a hot minute now, and it's time to get your own. And it does fill a vacancy and a role that is not yet filled. So I certainly like the fact that you can expand your offense even more with someone like T-Mac, who is a reliably handed Marquez Valdez Scantling. At number eight, Mason Graham goes to the Jets. I know that necessarily you guys haven't valued defensive interior as much as maybe you should in recent memory, but I also do know that you guys have used free agency acquisitions um, over the past to be able to fill the role. If Mason Graham slips to you, that's no longer an excuse. So I know that you passed on Johnny Newton, you passed on Byron Murphy, but you were also in a position where you needed to address tackle for the long run, and you got a very good developmental tackle there in Olu Fashinu. So not going to blame you for that at all. I think Mason Graham falling into your lap is similar to Olu Fashinu and the fact that 
you know, you're just going best player available. Uh, Mason Graham is getting reevaluated. I'm focusing on finishing up the corners first, and then defense interior is definitely overdue for full reevaluation. James Pierce goes at pick number nine. I think don't know if he goes above Abdul Carter, but you can't go wrong with either of them. Fantastic talent, and you know, James Pierce. I think that he's very similar to Dallas Turner, which you could end up also comping to Brian Burns, which is obviously an instant system fit. At number 10, you got Kenneth Grant, KG going to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, KG to the Dolphins makes a lot of sense. You need some pass rushing presence on the interior. And at 343 pounds, which maybe he's 339, who gives a shit? Four pounds off, less than a pretty much 1%. Um, you know, at that size, it would bring a whole entire new presence that Christian Wilkins didn't even have. Uh, because he was not 340 pounds. If I'm, yeah, it's Sexy Dexy who's the big one. So next we got Ashton Genty. Spoke about him earlier. I do think he's going to end up being a top five pick. But if he somehow slips to 11, the Cowboys would be stupid to pass on him. The fact is Rico Daddle was just named the starter because, you know, Ezekiel Elliott, Rico Daddle. It's not a good running back group. I honestly think I still am pretty damn confident in Deuce Vaughn. That's just me. Um, I got to see him multiple times in person. I think he's more talented than both of those guys combined. But, you know, um, my comments will go on deaf ears. And that's okay. At pick number 12, we got Malachi Starks going to the Colts. It's a pick I've made several times. Not going to disagree. Secondary help is always a plus. Malachi Starks is definitely one of those players that deserves that respect. When he gets exposed for one rep that he does poorly and people are like, ha, 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 and clowning him, that's a good sign because he's held to such a high standard that one misstep on one uh, one particular play is something that gets extremely highlighted. And that's just because we think so highly of him that a play like that is more so something that is abnormal than something that we are just like, oh, we want to highlight the good stuff with him. At 13, you got Nick Scorton going to the Bengals. Fits their style of edge rusher. Makes a ton of sense if you're going to try to get off of Hubbard. And it just kind of sucks that Miles Murphy was not able to take that big step. At number 14, you got Luther Burden going to... The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, good after the catch ability, really depressing year overall, but, um, you know, he's not been the main reason for it. It's been primarily that whole entire offensive system. Luther Burton's been one of the bright spots. Number 15, you got Jonas Savania going to the Seahawks. He just doesn't feel like a tackle to me. The, when I was watching Noah Fafita for the quarterback video, again, over an hour long, feel free to go check it out. Um, I just kept seeing so much pressure coming off Savania's side, and it's not that he's bad by any means, but... I really do feel like he is just so green at right tackle and he's been playing it for multiple years now, so he shouldn't be, but he just feels like he hasn't taken the developmental steps. And I think that interior offensive line is going to be much closer to where his um, ideal fit is. And when you have guys like Kelvin Banks and you also have technically Cam Williams that I don't think they're counting him out in this. So Cam Williams, Kelvin Banks, Josh Simmons, uh, it just makes to me, no sense, even though, yes, I do know that apart from Cam Williams, the other two are left tackles. I would prefer to roll the dice on higher level talents and um, go after guys who I feel could be true tackles. Speaking of true tackles, Kelvin Banks goes to the Rams. Perfectly great value. I'm not going to disagree with it at all. They need an upgrade at left tackle for the long run. So I am happy with that. The Bears somehow steal Abdul Carter. Uh, I, I highly doubt that he'd ever slip to this point. The only reason he could is if there are injury questions involved. Jeez. What the hell? Is that like a, hold up. Is that like a nasty looking beard there on Cam? God, Cam, you need to get like, get over No Shave November when you go in there, dude. Like clean that shit up, dog. <laughs> Straight up. That looks so bad. Um, it, Well, maybe next time we'll see Cam Williams uh, come out and probably be a top five pick though in 2026. That's my hot take. Uh, but Cam Williams, super raw, ended up getting hurt this past game, but ended up coming back. I thought he was out for the year, but straight up like, of like on picture day, you can't trim your beard. Come on, man. <laughs> like, I can tell he's not, he doesn't have a big mustache there, but like maybe he's still trying to grow it out. We got to give him some love, but uh, it's a great pick for the Niners. He's developmental right tackle, so I'm not going to disagree. At number 19, we have Jalen Walker going to the Colts. It feels like a very Baron Browning thing to do, uh, but you got Jonathan Cooper, Jonah Ellis, Nick Benito. I think they're pretty happy with that, uh, but you could end up just saying, hey, we like having two at each position. Walter Nolan goes at 20 uh, to the Texans, the pick I made plenty of times. So, you know, defensive interior makes a ton of sense. Guard makes a ton of sense. But again, guard, there's so many of them in this class. You can wait till round two and get a really damn good one. LT Overton goes at 21, makes all the sense in the world. It's pretty much between him and Mikel Williams for me every single time. Uh, great frame, great athlete. 
you know, you know, it's kind of weird that he's 283 because he moves like 270. So that's actually a really big plus. Dalen Walker goes to the Cardinals at 22. Defensive interior help is something they've been looking for as well. So I think that being able to snipe it at 22 with a 345 pound, very unique build uh, is certainly something that could end up working out very much in their favor. At 23, you got the sexy pick. You got Colston Loveland going back to Harbaugh there. Makes a ton of sense. Harbaugh values tight ends, and Colston Loveland's been a stud. At pick number 21, you got Tyleek Williams going to the Packers. I like Tyleek. He's just been a little bit underwhelming this year. I mean, he's never been statistically overwhelming, so I think that he's fine, but I just don't know if the stat line or you know the overall production is going to warrant a first-round pick, but I don't think that would be a bad thing if... The draft ended up shaking out that way. JT Tui Molau goes to the Washington Commanders. I'm very happy to see some JT love. It's a pick I made myself. And then you got Tyler Booker going to the Baltimore Ravens. They got to get offensive line help, but I think that left tackle is a priority here. If you think Tyler Booker could be trained to be the future at left, then there's a good chance that this will end up working out as a very good pick. Then we have Isaiah Bond going to the Steelers at 27, just a quality boundary receiver who adds that deep stretch ability. Hopefully he can remain healthy and hopefully that you know, at 180 pounds with the ankle issue that he's already had this year, it doesn't become a perpetual issue. But I mean, getting the Steelers even more prowess on the boundary is never going to be a bad idea. So I'm not going to be against it. Dalen Everett goes at pick number 28. I love Dalen Everett. I think that he's going to be surprisingly high compared to what people think when I end up evaluating him and dropping him in this coming week's video. But Dylan Everett, man, he's a fantastic corner, very underrated. People just don't give him the credit he deserves. And people are saying like, oh, I see him get cooked every single time. I mean, I watched the one game where A, he graded the lowest and B, he was targeted the most and C, I think he gave up the most amount of yards and I still came away really liking him. That's a big litmus test for you guys who are trying to evaluate stuff for the first time. Look at their worst games, and if you end up liking them through it, I can almost guarantee you, you'll like them at their best. At number 29, Donovan Jackson goes to the Eagles. Could end up being the position they look at as, um, you know, if Mekhi Becton ends up wanting to dip because he has been a phenomenal, phenomenal player this year at guard, which is surprising. So could definitely see him being a develop like an instant right guard replacement because I don't really trust Steen myself. And then a developmental guy for right tackle. Like he's going to be an instant upgrade at guard and uh, even could be trained to be the future at right tackle. Then you got Ben Morrison going to the Bills. I think that's perfectly fine. You guys know what I think of Ben Morrison. He's sitting there at number three on my board. So I'm not going to disagree with this. Of course, that is pre-injury. I think actually post-injury, it's like an 81.75. So he might be fourth overall, but technically Josh Simmons hasn't been dropped either. So he'll be number three regardless. At number 31, you got Landon Jackson going to the uh, the Detroit Lions. I think there are better edges than Landon Jackson, but he's a freakish build. I wouldn't be surprised in round two if they want to pass on edge in round one. I would not be too surprised if this were the outcome. And then at 32, you got to carry Davis going to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, he's honestly gotten to the point of being a bit underrated. And even to me, I think he's been a bit underrated. I do worry that he could end up being a... Um, a pretty much a defensive back, like a safety. But I honestly think the Kansas City Chiefs can use him in so many different ways that uh, I think that this pick couldn't be a busted one unless Takario just simply cannot hold on to one position. I think that the flexibility of role could end up actually improving his odds of being a really damn good player. So that's going to be the video. Thank you so much for watching. Love you. See you on the far side. Peace.